crazy train in your face. Aim with... right up in your face. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fucking Blake? <laughs> with me is Omar Ibrahim. A baby was born on the class 466022 working the 1818 Victoria to Ashford train on the 7th of March. The train was delayed by about 37 minutes. Two nurses and a midwife were on board at the time. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy fact. About but, trains. And stuff. But I can't. <laughs> something crazy. <laughs> and it's in your train. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Us. <laughs> the crazy train. <laughs> and I'm your, I'm your host, Rob Wade. Hello, Still Rob. no girlfriend. <laughs> you don't got a song? I got a catchphrase there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's so alone. <laughs> no so one here beside him. On his train. <laughs> I don't know how I'm singing this, but I'm not near him. <laughs> <laughs> train on my own. Yeah, good. No. <laughs> this I love that note. We can edit this bit out. Mm. Edit. What, the intro? Edit. <laughs> edit. <Yeah. laughs> People just turn up and subscribe to it on iTunes to episode 6 and they're just like, Rode the other day and I was... <laughs> <laughs> Think about Jews. <laughs> I don't spend any... Oh, we're not actually going with that. No. Okay. <laughs> Free <sir. laughs> So anyway. So anyway. I uh, experienced my first Sweets Festival recently. Oh, lovely. Um, you say lovely. Um, it, it was largely just a selection of bells and sticks every eight feet for a mile and a half. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of quaint and it's yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. It, it brings out the, um, the same stalls that are around and things like Dickens, which is also yep. cool. Um, there was a bloke dressed like Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> In the sweeps festival. Sweeps being chimney sweeps. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Victorian chimney sweeps. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> the Sweets Festival, for anyone who doesn't know, is actually a May Day folk festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is uh, yeah, so Captain Jack Sparrow really doesn't fit in at Wasn't all. Wasn't it something no. like because the summer's coming up now, people won't be using their fires like the Victorian days, so the chimneys wouldn't be getting blocked up, so the sweeps would be out of work for a few months. Oh, so yeah. they would go out to the streets and collect money, and it was basically like an out of work. Yep. I've Sweet. been so I just go there and get drunk yeah, you know I mean? yeah. <laughs> I go, I, I've only been to the Sweet Zone I went to Medieval Fair it was really cool I bought a drinking horn nice nice yeah. Yeah. Um, so the thing that pissed me off I the most three that's cool yeah. 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 Um, the thing that pissed me off the most about sweeps was that people don't un- people don't seem to understand how movement works <laughs> right now I get that if there's Morris dancing going on in the middle well, of I thought the you were going to give us a physics lesson no no <laughs> well the buzz <laughs> I don't know, those ones. No, that was a B. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome <laughs> Professor Hive. <laughs> um, the thing about Swiss is if, there, so if there's Morris dancing going on in the middle of the roads, you expect people to kind of circle around it. That makes to watch. sense. Yeah. yeah, to watch it until it goes until it finishes and then people disperse and mm-hmm. some people stick around to watch something else because there might be some more going on. Like and pipers and things, yeah. isn't it, normally? And yeah. it is it is cool to watch a couple of times, mm. like to watch the different sort of dance troops. You get different people around. who would have different, yeah, different to it. People, different moves, different yeah. routines and stuff like that. And that's kind of cool. What's not cool is the fact that when you've got one row of movement around the outside, people shouldn't fucking overtake ever. <laughs> you just go along with the flow. Yeah, yeah, I was walking through the crowds and there were people trying to get in front of me. I almost turned around and went, what the fuck are you trying to achieve? You will get to the tat stalls two seconds before I do. You absolute oh, so bell end. They're the best tat stalls around though, I find those. They ones. are good. When, when, they've, when they've got all their tat, like little tankards and all the shit they've got in the space, it was good fun. Yeah. But like, the wizard buying it all. What's really weird? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the um, you, you can't get Sparrow's money. Have you noticed know, like the, the American Civil War guys? Mm. Why the fuck are they there? Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah, exactly. Like American Civil War's gonna. I get. Um, there's usually a guy who does a samurai thing, and that's something to do. With, is it, I, I don't know the name. Japan. From, uh, yeah. <laughs> There was a, there's a road here, Will Adams. I'm not it's thinking it might be a way. beer or something. Ito, yeah. Ito but way. there's it was basically for a uh, there was a man from like Rochester Del, from Del Medway no, <laughs> who became a samurai, okay. and it's like he bridged the gap between us and them, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Will Adams. Um, yeah, is it Will Adams? Yeah, yeah, yeah Will Adams. Way it leads on to Ito. Way, That's right. Yeah, yeah. We um, have and I get that in that case, I get that there is a festival for him, yeah. and that there are people dressed as samurai. Sure. And I get that when we do something like sweeps, those guys might bring out their samurai costumes because, like, I know, for instance, I put together like a, a, a lamellar leather 
uh, armor shirt, mm -hmm. right? It took me three months right. and a reasonable amount of money. I will literally wear that at almost every costume party because it, it was a, a great amount of work and I'm very proud of it. It's a so I, yeah, yeah it's exactly, a right? Yeah. And I get that, you know, if you have a full samurai costume, they are worth a fortune. Yeah. So I get you're going to wear... It's like when I, uh, I turned up to one of our... Halloween parties in an inflatable Jabba the Hutt costume, which was fun. I wore that; for, it was amazing. But I wore it two years in a row, yeah, because it was sixty-five quid, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get my money's worth out of it. Well, that's the thing; it's like this is why I don't tend to do much for Halloween because I've yeah. historically never seen the need to wear the clothes after the fact. Yeah, so I had um, I went to one as Garth from Wayne's World, mm -hmm. and thankfully managed to convince my friend um, Dean from the, the aforementioned "Welcome to the Motherfucking Family" Dean story nice. from last episode. Um, to go as Wayne because he had long dark hair and uh, he had the sort of similar yeah, 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 yeah. and as we I remember the funniest thing about the night was as we walked in the door because we arrived together Some I, the first time I ever met one of the people I ended up working with later on the first thing he ever said to me was shouting across the thing that's fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> so like we talk about like, costumes I was talking about this with somebody the other day funny enough because there's like a, there's a convention coming up in London or something like that and 20, people, uh, 25th of May the e, ECM Expo yes exactly yeah right and Cosplayers, right? And I'm not going to get in, like, I've got an argument with my, my ex, but my ex, sorry, no, my girlfriend, oh shit. Um, I've got an argument <laughs> with her about that. We don't record, uh, like, ahead of time. Because, because I'm, I'm, where I do, like, uh, sort of costume time. stuff, it's more like reenactment style things. Yeah. And I, what I was basically trying to say is, when I, when, when a reenactment guy builds a costume, he looks up the, not always, but some guys will be like, okay, they didn't use these modern day tools to do it what did they do I'm going to try and build a costume in the way they did it how am I so going to how am I going to keep time without a digital watch yeah exactly yeah, yeah. they reenact things whereas you cannot reenact Spider-Man because he's not real sure you can look at how did he make it in the in the comic how did he make his suit oh I'm going to make it the same way yeah. I'm going to try you know I don't know you might want to use the same brand to, sewing machine or whatever yeah. but you physically cannot be Spider-Man Right. Yeah. What? That's what. But the costumes, right? And people who put so much work into these, and I, I kind of, on one hand, like I get it, and I don't get it because to me, like I'd go along there, and I've never been to a convention or anything. I've always been like when I'm working and stuff like that, or there's been nobody I'm interested. Yeah. I'd want to go and meet people who've been in movies and series that I like. Yeah. yeah and get their autographs. I wouldn't want to do it dressed as a stormtrooper because any pictures I have aren't going to be me. Yeah. Could be any motherfucking stormtrooper. So I get. Okay, you, you dress up. You want to be part of it all, and mm. it's become a. I guess it's just like I really want to dress up as my favourite anime character but there's no way really for me to do that oh we can just do it for this there's no reason to do it they're just doing it for the fun of it I get that what I don't get are people who put a lot of effort into cosplaying as a person who doesn't have a costume right, right so you cosplay as a stormtrooper okay right a lot of money going into that or you cosplay as somebody like um Oh, with six Star Wars like Darth Maul. Okay. You've got all the face paint, you've got to get, you might have to have the right physique I've seen a load of really good uh, Game of Thrones ones I really like to cosplay as Lando yeah, right, but <laughs> I'm not being racist yet, Rob. Okay. But I don't get people who cosplay I like in the use of the word yes. standard <laughs> standard clothing. So it's one thing, the difference between cosplaying and fancy dress. So you go as Wayne's World, okay. right? Or you go as Slash. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It's a costume and you've put a bit of effort. But when they put a lot of effort into something I mean, she's kind of iconic, but I was gonna go for Lara Croft. Okay. Like jean shorts or whatever she wears yeah. and a tank top. Right, um, but some people put a lot of effort into something that's from something nobody knows right. that is basically wearing street clothes. It's sort of like I can't think of an example often because Lara Croft is my one. But I mean, Lara Croft is what she wears has become iconic. Yes, it would. Uh, here we go. I saw a guy who uh, who cosplayed as Del Boy from Only Fools and Horses. Right, right. He just, so he's wearing a lambskin coat with a flat cap. Yeah. That's just clothes people wear. My like my dad used to be a market trader when he first moved to England and almost everybody around him wore those things. That's why Del Boy wears that. Yeah. It's not like Del Boy wore a really distinctive necklace. It's not like, for instance, uh, cosplaying as Mr. T, yeah. where he wears normal clothes. Oh, look at all that gold around his neck and the mohawk. Mm -hmm. He's obviously Mr. T. Gotcha. Like, I just don't get cosplaying... I, I kind of don't get cosplaying at all. Okay. Because there's so much money you could be spending on getting laid. But it doesn't always help. I also called no. I also called <laughs> called shit on my friend. I hope he's listening to this. Um, who said he was at the one last year and One Direction were there, right. and he said that they had security all around them so that people could get to them. That's understandable. But also he said, oh my friend, um, uh, he didn't like see security and he just wanted to get through and he barged out of the way and he knocked that Harry guy on his ass. I was like, I just said to him, that's funny because I didn't hear about that in the news and they're the biggest band in the fucking world at yeah. the minute. And he's just like, well, um, um, I was like, my. I think I mentioned the last one Gino my Saturday well, his 
sister. Still ma- sounds, yeah. still sounds horrible, doesn't it? His um, <laughs> sister is a massive One Direction fan. Okay. And like he's, he, I think he went to a, a movie premiere. Well, because he likes One Direction. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gino. He's 16. Leave him alone. Sorry, Gino. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> good. We're, we're, we're um, no, and he no. saw they were on the carpet for this movie, or whatever it was. And then, no, that's not a gay thing. One Direction. <laughs> the car- Apparently, they formed a Roman like battle line around them so people couldn't know. Not only a Roman sentinel. They made a turtle. A Roman sentinel here with, with no fucking legs. Um, Carpets. They formed Crazy. a Roman turtle, of, not with riot shields, oh, but the security were in a ring around them. There is no fucking way. A scrawny little wanker is going to get through all of that yeah. and knock down one of One Direction. Like this is the same guy who fucking told me he does 100 mile martial arts and while sparring with him I have kicked his ass about... I'm probably not exaggerating saying I tapped him out eight times in five minutes. And to anybody who wrestled me in legit wrestling back in the day, I am shit. I can hold my own for about two or three minutes but if you have any more longevity or knowledge than me, you'll kick my ass. I got my ass kicked by a 62 year old man week after week after week at wrestling training. I am not good at it. And I kicked his ass numerous fucking times. Mm. One of them with a pouring great nose where I lost nearly a pint. Wow. Yeah, and I still kicked his ass. So fuck you, you lying piece of shit. I ain't get your bike out of my shop. It's in the fucking way. <laughs> doesn't you know? Get as long as he doesn't make it. Personal. He won't be listening to this. Okay. You fuck it. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. And my other friend like is cooler than you. You know, last week we is. mentioned about negative email. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can do without that. Yeah, you, you fucking ninja costume wearing wank. He's also, apparently, like, he, he goes to, um, he cosplays at these things okay. as well. But it's always like, he'll always be like, because he, he, I built this costume and he was like, would you be able to build me a samurai costume? Did you build this did, costume on rock and roll? I did. I said, I, well, show me what you want and I'll see if there's anything I can do. Obviously, I'm going to charge you for it. I'm going to charge you parts. I'm going to charge you labels. It's going to take me weeks. Sure. Samurai costumes are one of the hardest to build. Okay. And he sent me this one and I was like, yeah, no, that's going to take me a long time. I can probably do it. You're probably not going to have it for this year. You'll have it for next year. Uh, it's going to take months to put that together, to dye the leather in that. Um, he wanted it all done legit. I was right. like, there's nothing I can't do. I'm pretty okay. handy with my crafting. Okay. But then he was like, oh, okay, blah, blah. And then like, a week later... I was like, do you want it done or not? Because I'm going to have to get started. He was like, no, I bought one. And he, he showed me a picture from like a costume. And it was just like a fucking twenty two ninety nine costume piece of shit. That he's going to get laughed at mm. wearing this thing here. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, it, it'll be the same as like, I'm going to the ninja and doing that thing with your tired t-shirt around your head. Gotcha. I love doing that though. That's quite hilarious. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about it. You do it with long sleeves. You look more like an hand. Especially being a wrestler, who probably has the game. <laughs> <laughs> What's Triple H on your forehead? <laughs> I'm the Ninja Miz. <laughs> <laughs> the Ninja. <Wait. laughs> that works. No, my stealing, new, my stealing that from another podcast, actually. So. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry, ask a ninja. Oh, okay. That was, all. What, 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 that what was would, the thing. What would you ask a ninja if you had the opportunity? Well, actually, I've seen the series Ask a Ninja, so all of my questions have been answered. No, there must be one. What would I ask a ninja? It yeah. would be, why does everybody think you're so fucking cool when you clearly all died out? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the thing about it pissed me off about ninjas because I've actually I read a book about them at mm. one point, and it was it was like a sort of. So you're an expert now. No, it was. <laughs> I'm aimed, sorry, not Brad. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was aimed at kids. Yeah, pro- kind, of. kind of kids and oh, kid ninja kid, book. He's still in the air. <laughs> <laughs> um, kids, kind of t- to teenage fiction, like teenage yeah, reference yeah. rather than teenage fiction, because that's. A teenage fiction ninja book, which I'm then going to quote for historical accuracy. Teenage fiction ninja book. <laughs> Heroes in a half shell book. Ninja. <laughs> Crazy. Carry on. Um, Crazy book. And the one, the, the first thing it pointed out, which which made instant sense to me, and I couldn't believe I'd never it never occurred to me before, was ninjas wouldn't always just dress in black. No, pajamas. in that black shuriken They style. would dress like, to blend in. Yes, because they were assassins. Exactly. They invented the German suplex. Really? Yeah, they would run up and go, if you don't know, wrestling, German suplex, from behind, arms around the waist. <laughs> yeah. Throw <laughs> so them the, over your head. On the carpet. With in pro pressure. wrestling, you... <laughs> in pro wrestling, you would... Uh, Do you know? Go into a bridge or okay. a crab kind of thing and pin them with their shoulders. But in, in, in a legit sense, you would just throw them as hard as you can onto the head and it would snap next. They would appear out of alleyways, grab people from around the waist, throw them over their head, kill them, and disappear again. Well, I suppose for you him. wouldn't hear it. There's no bang. There's not even a stab wound. <laughs> just somebody laying on the floor, dead now. Yeah, with and a I, broken neck. And, and, I, I, crack. and I assume that you know, even now, it would probably forensically be quite a difficult thing to establish. Yeah, if you did it properly. But yeah, they wouldn't dress as. Actually, do you know where the ninja dressing as black came from? 
Well, I mean, there might have been points where they did it. I, no, well, I guess so. The, the, the reason we know it so well is... Um, is, it like, is it like Father Christmas where Coca-Cola did it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a stage show um, that where they... they Ninja, did, the it musical. Was like the st- <laughs> That's actually really close to what it must have been. It's but a they, Ninja. <laughs> when people... <laughs> What's he We're going to kill for contracts. <laughs> when uh, when they used to move like the scenery around before they used like pulley ropes, they had men dressed head to time black. Stagehands. Stagehands yeah. moving the bits of scenery around. Okay. And on this one show, um, to add a real sort of sense of surprise, one of the supposed stagehands dressed head to time black stepped out from the shadows and killed one of the characters. They had m- a murder on the one no, show? No, not an actual. No. <laughs> they, and this guy was supposedly a martial artist and he blended in so well. Yeah. That he became, it was like a fourth wall thing. Okay. He, he blended in so well that he became part of the scenery. Yeah. And then killed, and then like ripped his mask off. And that was where ninjas came from. It, it was stagehands. He became part, all, part of the scenery, which is an irony in itself because he was a stagehand. <laughs> head to toe. Uh, part part of, of the scenery he swore to serve. I might be completely wrong on that. That's probably bullshit. Wrong. But no, it's possible. It sounds about right though, doesn't it? It sounds like something I can conceive of that. That sounds good. I really should go see the Rocky Horror Ninja show. <laughs> I'm just your sweet. <laughs> I'm just your sweet. <laughs> so the other day, right? This is a weird thing, and I'm still trying to compute in my mind why it struck out to me so much. I saw a guy walking out of one of those adult shops. You know, the ones that are like got the very betting new... shops. No, no. I'm being um, naive. You're gonna have to help me here. <laughs> they sell naughty lady part magazines. <laughs> oh, and summers. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. They also sell DVDs of the lady parts being sort of you know. HMV. Uh, technically, yes. See, X still do an adult section in some stores. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah no, I, have, I found it on the I've website. Seen that in the, the uh, I searched for something else last night, and I found Lawrence of the Labia. Oh yeah, um... <laughs> it's real. That's a real movie. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence of the Labia. It was in. I just want to see him out in the tent flaps. <laughs> I um, I remember I was in. I remember seeing the adult section in the Brighton one, and because yeah. of where I was, I was like, I'm not looking. Yeah, I'm not buying a thing. <laughs> It's all dicks and asses. Dicks and dicks. Dicks and dicks. Dicks and asses, volume dicks. five. Loop, volume five. Because Ooh, they didn't. Say, because when he didn't say all you could with the first four. <laughs> exactly. And they're still. It's like sore. You know? <laughs> I mean, it is. What are, you doing? <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that porn movies are sore? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> That's what I'm not. <laughs> Tell you worse. <laughs> um, so I saw a guy walking out of an adult shop. <laughs> which sell the Naughty, Naughty Lady Park magazines with a DVD sized box gift wrapped nice so like <laughs> and my, 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 I'm still kind of kind of get my head around it who's that for? I could actually probably tell you who for alright if you want to really uh, add a nice interesting story I had a friend from a wrestling days he was, yeah. he was a, uh, a good friend of us trained with us and he was very open about the fact that he was an avid collector of porn okay he used to sort of go through websites and, and had a large collection of the, uh, probably tapes because it was a few years ago. Yeah. Um, and he became, we, right, I, I can say his nickname, we all know him as Ferret. Okay. And anybody who knows Ferret will know him as Ferret, if okay. you know what I mean. Yeah. If you don't know him as Ferret, you won't know these stories. Yeah. So it's fair sure. enough. He's a great guy, I love him absolutely. Is he bits. one of the ones who did the ferret rides when I came back from the Philippines? No, he didn't do the ferret rides okay. in the Philippines. Because he might have been um, the one who made me lose my lunch. In which case, <laughs> fuck you, ferret. He's a really nice guy, but had some of the best stories. One of the weirdest weirdest guys I've ever heard, but in an absolutely lovely way. But he told us a story once where he decided he had too much porn. Okay. So he sorted his porn out and he made, a, he made a box of porn he did want and a box of porn he didn't want. Right. He was living at home with his parents at the time. So... So they helped. They helped. Yeah. He um, he made a, a box of, you know, that he didn't didn't want, and the, the, I do believe the didn't was bigger. And he was going to I don't know give it to like the Red Cross shop or something. But he was going to get rid of it somehow. Yeah. So he left it in his room and put the good stuff under his bed or wherever he was putting it. Yeah. Um, went out to work. Came back. No porn. Right. No all. porn in the room at all. Well, the good stuff still under the bed. Okay. The bad box of porn. The bad box of porn. Now this guy is extremely perverted. So the bad porn must have been. Pretty fucking, you know, Chumble One Five or something. Super wet cock. Jungle ninjas. Dongs, yeah. yeah. Jungle Dongs. <laughs> Jungle Dongs Three. Yeah. Um, Chorizo and comes Google. home and he goes. He's like, okay, well, I can't ask about this because it's poor. Goes out uh, into like, the front room. Remember, his mum goes, oh, I uh, I moved that box from your room into the I think it was conservatory. Masturbation den. <laughs> it's new because it was in the way. So he was like. 
thank god like yeah. oh, she didn't know what it was she just thought it was a box of stuff and she goes uh, yeah it was a bit heavy to move so I had to take some of them out and then put them all back in again so his mum had just been through his porn collection but the porn he didn't even want yeah. I said, like, would you rather have your mum find your porn or the porn you don't want to watch anymore do you know what I mean yeah so I, I, that's, I love the stories of this guy that's, so that is who he was buying the gift wrapped uh, Badonka Donks Volume 5 for <laughs> Tonka Tonk Super Wet Cock Asses Volume Ninja <laughs> Jungle Dons <laughs> So back to Sweeps So yeah. um, How did we get from Sweeps to gay porn? I have no idea Captain well, Jack Sparrow Captain Jack Yeah <laughs> To be Samurai. fair They're almost Samurai Samurai <laughs> Was Captain Jack Sparrow <laughs> Oh Was Captain Jack Sparrow Really really nice From the last week He was really nice Yeah <laughs> 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 Fucking pirates Fucking nice pirates <laughs> God Neither. damn you asses to hell. <laughs> so, the stool that every time I go to Dickens or Sweeps or anything catches my eye and sends me into fits of hysterical laughter is the butcher's called the Giggling Pig. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what has a pig got to giggle about when all its friends... But it's tail. Yeah, but That's all, fucking weird. All its friends and or cousins are dead. But they orgasm for 45 minutes. I'd be giggling, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You'd be giggling if you ever had I'd settle for Self-inspired. I'd settle for 45 seconds at this point. <laughs> But, uh, you know, the giggling pig. I think it was... No, it wasn't Sweeps. It was at... Uh, no, it was Sweeps. Shit, that was a year ago where I had... Um, it would have been, yes. A kangaroo burger. Yep. And a dessert kebab. It oh, was brilliant, right? There's like a... It was like a, a mini doner kebab, mm. about a foot ho- high, made of white and milk chocolate. Nice. That spanned around, and they shaved it with... Um, oh, that was their issue. Was it, was it back? That was, yeah, it's yeah. so nice as I well. I remember seeing that. They, no, it's really cool. It's, it's really brightly coloured. They, they, like, the they sell like chocolate dipped... Um, Penises? Mushrooms. Mu- no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, you'd throw me off there. Um, marshmallows and things like that. But this was one of the things they do. And it comes so... They shave it with uh, a vegetable... Um, peeler. Mandolin. The technical term is a mandolin. Peeler. Yeah, it's a peeler. But right. it's, it's the Y-shaped one with a wire that goes... A piece of piece of like a cheese wire that goes across. Oh, I never got And they shave it in the manner of a doner kebab. Yeah. And they put it into this, uh, into a into a pancake, mm. right? And then you've got whatever that you would have on a kebab, there is a replacement for it in sweets. So, for instance, they have, instead of I'll, like... Right, I'll name a few. Go for it. Lettuce. Uh, was, I think, it was shaved crushed walnuts. Okay. Uh, onions. Were... No, that no, no. What were the onions? I can't remember what the onions were. I think it might have been like, um, I think it was more like sort of white chocolate curls or something okay. like that. Uh, cabbage was probably the nuts again because they just kind of cabbage red, and lettuce go together. Red cabbage, it was probably just red nuts. I don't know. I know instead of tomatoes, they had strawberries. Okay, they had banana instead of cucumber. Right. So there was like something sweet as a bad, and then instead of like you know ketchup, they had strawberry sauce. Okay, and you could make this sweet kebab. What do they have in t- instead of chili sauce? They actually had chocolate chili sauce. Oh, nice! Which I'm, I know you're a fan of. I don't yes. like chili chocolate at all. Well, you um, can't. You can't have. I can't. Spice. I can't handle spicy food yes. at all. So. Although, to be fair, the other day I had a couple of days where I ate really uh, large amount of spicy food, and I couldn't handle it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a sweet kebab, and it's one of the nicest things mm. I've ever eaten. It was like it was. I mean, just full of fucking shit. Obviously, it was so this is Bla- Blake just is, chocolate. And Blake nuts is livid because even the fucking kebabs are nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was really, really good. Really tasty. Everybody did try one. They're really good fun. Yeah. Like the kebab made by studio. Cunting Ghibli. You want chili sauce salad? It's free. It's free for you because you can smell now. I smell. <laughs> so there's a... I think we've actually called back everything from last week. Now. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's last week. Yeah. <laughs> that hole in the fourth wall is... A li- you know, at least it's airing out. <laughs> yeah. Although it's nice to know that on a nice sunny day we're indoors with the curtains, <laughs> with the blinds drawn podcasting. <laughs> Crazy! We're get social retards. We're going to get a pizza <laughs> yeah. and probably game. Yeah, probably. Not game. Probably. probably. It's what yeah. we do. Well, it's, it's what we I do. I just bought my first... Uh, I ventured into, into Warhammer. Oh, yeah. I didn't really want to. I wanted to get into like, Wargaming because I play... Uh, we were playing, a group of us were playing uh, the X-Wing miniatures game. Uh, it's a really good game. It's really good fun. Mm. And I'd never tabletop war game before. I've played plenty of board games. Mm. Um, and not just, you know, like Monopoly and stuff like that. I've played like, uh, like zombie games, medieval games. But I've never actually war gamed. 
and this is kind of the closest I've ever got. And it was really, really good fun. And not, it's not like, roll a d6 for your ice spell across the passage of the dragon fire. Well, no, it's, it's X-Wing. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it's so that just different like, words. What, Luke, are you on some sort of crystal <laughs> explosion? Um, and it was really good fun. And I was like, actually, this we isn't as complicated. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't as complicated and slow and as boring as I, as I thought. And I was looking at loads of other, like, um, hey, medieval Brad's, games. Brad's still learning the rules. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots of other medieval games, things like that. And I was looking around, and the Lord of the Rings kind of Warhammer looked quite fun. And I found a box set uh, that they don't make anymore that was reduced to, like, 20-odd quid. And I thought, okay. well, for that price, I think it used to go for, like, 60, 70. So I thought, well, for that price, I'll give it a go. If I don't like it, I can probably sell it back at the same. So... Yeah, next time we do this, I should imagine I'll have probably board, I'll probably wargamed with Warhammer a little bit. Mm. Although it does set us up for an amazing sketch, I want to try. So look out for that. Yeah, keep I going. really want to do a. I, I like this. I love. Shall, it. I, shall I tease it at all? No. Or shall I not? Shall I not tell? No. Basically, we will be doing something with hopefully with with a games workshop. Yeah, that should be quite a funny sketch. Well, I say sketch. It might become legit. Yeah, um, we'll we'll do might it. get into a lot of trouble. Yeah. It'll be good fun. Same um, as I'm going to be going to IKEA soon. So well, uh, <laughs> I'll have some fun there. Oh, look at the <laughs> This is a true prison for the Swedish meatballs. <laughs> that video you showed me. It's just me waving at a plate of Swedish meatballs going, Swedish meatballs. Yeah, but that you can just watch that like at least eight times, maybe yeah. nine at a push. Before it stops being before funny. It stops being funny. Yeah. Which is better than most YouTube. Oh, because when I have Swedish meatballs in uh, Ikea, I like to put my chips in the gravy. Yeah, okay. It's good, it's tasty. I did chip for you, so the chips in the gravy. I'm going to go to buy the Billy Bookshelf. I did buy two Billy Bookshelves. All right. That was my day of adulthood. Yeah, I went. I went one Sunday to IKEA and bought myself a bookshelf. Okay, and then uh, the following Wednesday, I decided there was a little bit of space next to it, and I could get them the smaller version of the same bookshelf into it, and it would look quite nice, and I'd have plenty more room in my flat. Mm. So um, I went on the Wednesday. Oh, in fact, because fun fact, since the last time we podcasted, you haven't. I have moved into the flat. Yes, Yay! I finally moved in at long last. It's a lovely place. It's got plenty of work to do, plenty of decoration to do. The builder is, is literally just finishing on what he calls the snagging now. Let's like. share. Let's share some other good news, Blake. You got anything? Uh. I'm mean, moving to his flat. Hey. I'm moving still crushingly flat. alone. Hey. Oh wait, we made me sad again. Um, yeah, so it was my day I of adulthood. Have a job. Hey. My day of adulthood was um, I, so I go to IKEA yeah. and I know where I'm going, so I don't go shopping. You know, I don't go trying out the beds, which is what most people fucking do. Do you want a chair? Excuse me, got any chairs? A chair? Yeah, chairs. Oh, you mean a food balloon? I bought a lamp called Not. I'm using it for something else. I'm using the box for something else, so I've just written not a lamp on the box. Nerfed. <laughs> Florida Borgen. It comes in fear So I've gone straight through, gone to the warehouse bit, picked up this bookshelf, picked it up, put it in the car. Done. Rest. That's the problem right. I've got with IKEA, right? It takes fucking ages to go around it. Yeah, unless really you know does. what you're after. In which case, like the first time, all I wanted was a bookshelf, I just didn't know what one. So I just ran around until I got to a storage bit and went, oh, here's the bookshelf. Yeah. That's the one I like. Write it down, we're out again. Yeah. Right, so you, if you know what you're after, you can do it. Yeah. But yeah, so I built this, built this bookshelf, went across, I was in uh, Lakeside and Thurrock, so I went across the road and I needed a pair of everyday jeans okay. and some socks. I went my jeans. So I went way. into, yeah. Do you have to specify? No, no, so I mean, like, I didn't want like fancy expensive jeans. I'm, I'm a big in, guy, so it's hard for me to get. I'm in violation otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> is it legal? Is, it's, these, it's these jeans. Actually, I bought these, these are jeans. just regular stretch, so I mean. Uh, no, I haven't got any I'm wearing my, my Sunday jeans. <laughs> <laughs> My you church have, jeans. You have seven pairs. <laughs> Nothing quite. I have like seven pairs of socks that I have uh, Monday to Friday on. Got, and weirdly, why do I need any more socks? But I do. Well, because you, you don't necessarily always do a wash every week. I do. Oh, you do? But I, yeah, but I don't yeah, always. Fuck? Yeah, what exactly. The actual fuck. So anyway, I went to buy more socks, a pair of jeans. So I was very. I, I basically went in and uh, I was like, oh, there's some nice jeans, you know. And then I went, went up to the socks and I spent about five minutes picking out fucking socks. <laughs> then uh, we left there my girlfriend was doing some shopping for bits and bobs she needed some clothes for like where to work so some leggings and t-shirts and things mm-hmm. like that is, it, is Ikea another place you might be able to get um, square clothes <laughs> yes that might be the one <laughs> there in the Lego shop <laughs> oh, you put a jumper put a square shirt you're so fucking short here's a cardigan <laughs> cardigan board <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we walked outside and I thought oh there's models on I'll have a little wander in there just see okay. what's in there and they had a sale on and they had a Viking longship at half price and I was like, that's cool. It's this Rebel one that I've been looking at for a while. And I thought, do you know what? That's I haven't bad. really got any way to put it. I won't pick it up. Half price. And I didn't. Right? That's about hell of a good deal. Oh, for fuck's sake. That, <laughs> that joke made me thaw. Oh. Um, yeah, so I went for the model shop. So there's my adult moment of, I haven't got room for it, which is not something I would have said a year ago. I just would have bought it mm. and then found somewhere to put it. Went into HMV, looking around, and there's nothing in there as usual. Yep. But they had Angry Birds headphones. I don't think they're very good, but they're Angry Birds official headphones, reduced to three quid. Okay. And I was like, yeah, cool. And then I was like, 
actually, I don't really use headphones that much. I won't bother with those. Are you one of those cunts who plays their music loud on the train? Through? No, I don't. I, I, if I'm playing my music, I'm playing it to myself on my own, so I don't oh, need okay. headphones. All right, uh, I play it in, uh, at work when there's no customers, or right. I play it that's in the right. flat. Because I wouldn't have had to. We would have had to yeah. take this outside, <laughs> and it's a beautiful day, and I'm not having that shit. <laughs> I'm not going outside yeah. in this. It's, it flies so, in the face of everything. Yeah, there's five or something. I drove, I drove, I drove, I drove <laughs> home. You know, I had. I think, Tell me what we had to do. I think we had KFC. So I drove home and I dropped my girlfriend off and then I was like, oh, I need to pop to Tesco because I need some ham for tomorrow. And, and I, I got to Tesco and picked up the ham and picked up some other little bits that I need. And I was like, this is the most depressingly fucking adult that I've ever had. Mm. So I bought some Lego and came home. Yeah, it's funny you say <laughs> Which is where I got my Roman with no legs. Nice. Yeah. He's not Roman very far. No, <laughs> motherfucker. That's the master boys. So that's my day of adult. I didn't yeah. like it. I um ba- I, ca- I counterbalanced that uh, a few weeks ago as so I was clearing out uh, my bedroom because I I got a lot of uh, stuff that I've accumulated that I need to purge down mm-hmm. and I'm getting pretty good at it now like to the point where I've shrunk my game collection down by about a third oh, okay. which is still quite a decent size but you know, taking out yeah getting to the point where a woman could step through the door and not just be like I shouldn't be here a, a vagina doesn't go yeah and just, close. Um, just turn into a penis <laughs> <laughs> come into my den mind the Thomas the Tank engine will pay for <laughs> You, if you so much as get wine on my Thundercats pyjamas there will be hell to pay I had a Thomas the Tank pillow until I was 18 ok <laughs> Man, it was just a pillow case to be honest. I used to wash it and change it like all the others and it was just a pillow case that was ok and yeah. I, was, yeah, I didn't really I, um, I don't really own any kind of I own a lot of t-shirts with logos and stuff yeah same yeah, yeah I've got bits and bobs like that I've got a few I found a few I've got a Spartan as well that says House of Patty Artists I found a, few, a couple of wrestling t-shirts that I had cool. from old from the old I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing a wrestling t-shirt that you are uh, every time people see it they go how is that in any condition because it's from 2000 yeah but I picked it up in the back of a shop somewhere in about 2006 mm. and it was brand new in the packet it's the Triple H dry in the game one I always wanted it when I was a kid yeah. but there was no Euro shop or anything for WWE yeah, gear back in those it was days, really yeah. hard to get stuff you had to order it from WWE like a t-shirt was going to cost you about 35 quid weirdly enough I used to get my wrestling t-shirts when I actually bought them from um, Manny's Music in the high street in oh, really? high street he used see to I, like, get, I probably didn't even know it was there yeah he got honest. he just got a few random ones he I had the um, I did I had to return it because it was ridiculous. You know that Triple H um, hockey jersey? Yeah, the, yeah, sleeves? the white, the, the grey and black one. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a really awesome design, but the only thing that, the only size they had it in was like XL. Yeah, and it yeah, looked yeah, ridiculous on 15 huge. year old pasty ass yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> on the game! <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a cane t shirt which had like cane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the unofficial the ones. On oh, yeah, yeah. See, there was always they the ones. That they were, red they were the ones. Yeah, there were the ones you used to get. Like, like there were two types of official. Mm. You used to get like the market knockoffs with like two generation ooks. Yeah, you used to get two. You used to get the t-shirts that say the wrestlers would wear on the shows. Yes, like the Triple H around the game or the Game Over one. And mm-hmm. I remember the Rikishi one. I had the Game Over one. Yeah, yeah, the Game Over one was awesome. The the Rikishi one there was Undertaker's ones, yeah. all those. And Jericho. then you used to get the Jericho. official ones, but that yeah, Jericho had some really cool ones. Yeah. Um, like the Jericho Holic shirt. That, I had that. The, yeah. Um, but then you'd also get official shirts, but not like mass design when they were produced. I remember picking up a Triple H t shirt. Um, it was him like in a leather jacket, cross armed. Yeah. It was obviously a shot from just like an interview or something. Mm-hmm. Um, with I am the game I'm that damn good in a circle around him and WWE come get some on the back right. but it was in Clinton cards <laughs> there was that they used to have a licence to sell WWE merchandise yes. but they didn't have toys like action figures and mm. things so there were like two types of it well, Re- wrestling merchandise now is so cool well we well. saw really wrestling advanced. stuff on our Tesco's run right yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah that, like, that was a really cool like Velcro cane mask which looked awesome yeah no it was really it was like a, like a foamy kind of yeah well, thing, you, but it was I in good quality I, I don't know you wore it I so. wore it yeah, yeah I look like Kane with a beard I yeah, look like Daniel Bryan and Kane he looks the most like Kane out of all of us that's true I look like apart I, from my face looks like, like, my face looks like I've been burned in the fire but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no I mean a lot of uh, local like not like what British wrestlers have got some really cool mm. there is one of the best things I saw recently there's a brand called Defend Indie Wrestling okay um, and it's I think it's it's a take off of like an American kind of defend pop punk or something like okay. that maybe because the guy who who runs it Mark Andrews his name is that like he came up with it he's a big fan of that style of music and there's a few wrestlers that work for this company called Attack Pro Wrestling in Wales and a few other guys yeah. all involved and it's kind of a brand of clothing and it's it, it, the idea is to defend indie so it's not not like about it's not about WWE and it's not about that it's about like I think one of the one of the t-shirts is like fifty fans or fifty thousand or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, 
and they have this logo which is a, a, a turnbuckle which is basically two hooks the turnbuckle bowl two hooks that face the opposite way and they hold the ropes to the post okay. and it's defend indie wrestling and there's a guy called uh, Mark Haskins who worked for TNA for a while right. and he has I, I think he's, he's kind of doing it in a professional way but he's taken exception to it right. and he's doing screw indie wrestling I'm a pro right. so what he's basically saying is no you're not indie wrestlers like, it's just an excuse to not go to the gym or not get any good gear gotcha. so it's quite cool um, and it's there's no real rivalry. I mean, it might come to something where hopefully the two brands can kind of come together and have a bit of a feud and make some money out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a guy called Madman Manson who I wrestled a few times. Really, really fun guy. Yeah. Um, and he's completely off his fucking rocker. Uh, he often comes to the ring in one boot with the other one drawn on, and the results of the match written underneath his foot. Nice. So like he complete fourth wall. We did some. I had a brilliant match with him at Christmas once. Which got us thrown off the wrestling channel, but that's a different story for a different time. That would be good. It was a good story to tell, actually. Absolutely. I will do the How I Shut Down the Wrestling Channel story. Next uh, episode. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Um, if, but yeah, if people want he, it enough. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Let's start me. emailing, for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, yeah you, haven't, you haven't emailed at all since we told you last time. <laughs> I know, right? Arsos. <laughs> You've had ages. I know. Yeah. Love you. So sweeps. So, no. <laughs> No, right, so I just finished off this bit. Yeah. Madman Manson has uh, cottoned onto this. Okay. And he's like, because he's mental, and he's like, uh, he came up with a t shirt, and it's Angle Grind Indie Wrestling. Um, and it's just, he goes, he's, he's an Irish wrestler, it stands for nothing. It stands for everything that's wrong with wrestling. <laughs> it stands for absolutely nothing, but I really need a new car. And I really, really want one of these t shirts, because it's, su- it's such a cool idea that he's like, he basically, he's saying he's making. He actually came out in an interview and said, "I'm making money off of other people's good ideas right. <laughs> and hard work." Yeah. So, like, really cool. He's a really nice guy, Mama Manson. As you, well. can, you can be reassured that I'm not making any money off anybody's ideas. On yeah, this exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, this this podcast service has already cost me a tenner, so. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is a good deal. It's good fun. Yeah, so you there always Great. making profit? <laughs> Crazy We're profits about in a weird money, way. Money, bitches, and yeah. Headlocks. Well, I'm. I think that might be Mark Huskins. You know me. I'm all about the bitches. <laughs> yeah, all about the bitches. Yeah, right? not nice girls, just bitches that don't want to have sex with you. Apparently, <laughs> which is a lot of them. If you've had sex with Rob, you're not a bitch. <laughs> all right, good. I'm sure though. But you might have been his bitch. I'm sure some of those short lists will be thrilled. <laughs> I mean, all list. two of you. I mean, there's more than that. Three. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more. Than that. Three and a half. That works. <laughs> you got three sexes half? and three, a handle. Yes, the moment. <laughs> 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 Call back from Blake. So Call sweeps. <laughs> so sweeps. So one of the two of the games I decided to play because mm-hmm. when you're walking around and you're not really engaged in the Morris Lesson because you've seen you've been yeah. past that one and you start you start inventing fun in your head. Once you've seen one silly so puff waving some bells around, you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially yes. <laughs> um, so there's two games you can play. Um, Smack the silly puff with the belt. <laughs> so there's three silly games. You can play. One is Smack the silly puff with the bells on. Yeah. Um, Fuck them. Okay, so there's four. <laughs> Stop inventing games to play with the puffs. <laughs> so uh, and one of them stemmed from. I went to down to like the corner of um, the vines. Vines. The bottom of the garden with all the birds and the trains. What? The- Poddington Peas, motherfucker. Okay, see, that's... Right. that's I don't really you have know. some Poddington Peas? Nope. I've seen Poddington Peas. Good, thank Pees. you. I don't want to remember Poddington Peas. It was awesome, but I've seen it. I had books and everything. Really? <laughs> they might have just been peas. <laughs> My mum may have given me a packet of peas. And Did you press it. peas? Like we didn't have a lot of money as a kid, so I reckon when she bought me uh, like uh, Poddington Peas action figures, it was just a packet of frozen <laughs> <laughs> You could only play with them for 20 minutes. Did you... <laughs> Then we're did having you, dinner. Did you press peas like kids press flour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down at the bottom of the poor house. Where are my plays with his peas? <laughs> we invented a TV show so that he didn't feel left out. It's the we po- gave him some peas. <laughs> the poverty peas. The poverty peas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was... <laughs> The corner of the castle garden. Email us if you know what the Poddington Peas are, because now I think me and Blake might be mad. I know what they are, I just never watched it. Fuck you, I, I understand. You missed out. Yeah, probably. It was, it was all right. Oh, you really know, yeah. Add it to the list of things I'm apparently missing out on, like, you know, a loving relationship, <laughs> sexual contact of any kind, any kind of affection from a woman. Peas. Uh, you know, I'm Slapping, I'm starting to leave puff. I'm starting to. <laughs> Like, say, only, like a broken, lonely record. Yeah. <laughs> the only happiness Rob gets is from Nino Cooney, which is obviously the happiest game in the world. Yeah, I can't not like that game, which annoys me. <laughs> um, 
So when I was um, standing around, I know like there's um, opposite the coin exchange, there's like a set of public toilets, and there was people sort of sort of coming mm-hmm. in and out, obviously. And there was a bloke who came out who was a Morris dancer, and he was for some reason blacked up. I didn't uh, because they're sweeps. They go. They would have traditionally gone up the chimneys. Yeah, they're covered in soot. They're not blacking up. They're making it look like they're covered in soot. Okay, there you go. So, so when they did the mummy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they should, they should, <laughs> they're not nigging up on you. They shouldn't have, should, <laughs> should have been doing that. So that was the well, that, well, I never did say yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nigging up can't be racist. Right, right, surely, <laughs> my mum the other day once said he's a bit niggly. That's a word, though. Uh, yes, but yeah. she was at. A, but she was talking about a black man, Oof. but did not mean in in yeah, a yeah, nigger. Yeah. Oh. She meant niggly, as in uh, yeah. the normal sense of nigger. But was talking about a nigger. It was brilliant. I would love to say that. <laughs> I just said talking about a nigger. <laughs> <laughs> I just surprised myself with some racism. What? Yeah, well, that's the last time. Well, well that's good because you never surprise us with it. <laughs> um, Fucking Jews. I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to say that my um, that's my favourite story of a mother putting their foot in their mouth accidentally. But my favourite one is my own mother, bless her heart, was in the shopping centre with my sister and um, waiting for the lift. And somebody came up in a wheelchair. And there wasn't enough room for everybody in the lift. And my mum went, oh, no, you go ahead of us. And they said, oh, are you sure? And she said, yeah, that's fine, we can walk. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening, mum... The reason I love you is stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, it's not as good as the Freddie Got Fingered. Uh, What's wrong with you? Nothing that's wrong with you. That way you're just lazy. <laughs> the guy in the wheelchair. Yeah, I love uh, that movie. Nobody else does. I've no. never seen it. No, nobody likes Freddie Got Fingered except me and Zach Sand Jr. Okay. Oh, I dropped that name. Could you get it for me? No, it's fine. Yeah, to be honest, I'm struggling to find it in the pile of names you drop on a regular fucking basis. <laughs> um, he used to be a wrestler. I don't know if you know. I wrestled Jimmy Snooker once. <laughs> You've only mentioned that. I did the other day and I walked in uh, I went to a wrestling show to do some announcing Fuck. and uh, I walked into <laughs> <laughs> we walked into like the, the bit where we were going to get changed and they had shut off the room we normally use so all we had was like this kind of staircase was it and everybody of, was grumbling about was it, it full went, of names <laughs> <laughs> and I just went for fuck's sake I wrestled Jimmy Snooker and now this oh god you played considering that there are people there who have been like like champions in other countries and things like that and I am literally a, not even a blip on the radar compared to them me pretending to be the egotistical superstar jaded superstar is one of the funniest parts about me going up Coventry do, do you literally said telling me that you played the do you know who I'm not game yeah <laughs> I've got a brilliant uh, let's finish off this bit but I do have a brilliant uh, do you know who I am story from when me and my dad went into a casino in right. Cyprus hold once. that thought yeah. sweeps <laughs> so there was a bloke this is the sweeps episode. coming out of the Urinal and he was blacked up and he had bells on his feet and it made me wonder when they shake after they've taken a piss <laughs> do, they, do they jingle? so that's one game so you, yeah. fo- you follow a Morris dancer into the urinals obviously you use them as well because you're not like just be stand, weird, you don't it? just stand yeah, by yeah just following a man into the urinals to see if he jingles is weird <laughs> so you, <laughs> fucking, you just yeah, imagine how, how fucking funny that would be though you walk in stand behind him when he shakes and just go nope and just walk out <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if he takes a piss like Noddy <laughs> <laughs> What, Piss like Noddy was the name of my. Down. Piss yeah. like Noddy was the name of my jazz band. <laughs> That's a good name for yeah, it. Yeah. On big ears. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so and, the, uh, and the other game was to after it's, it's for after sweeps when everybody starts filing out, especially the Morris dancers. You walk w- uh, behind a crowd of people and you play which one is jingling. <laughs> <laughs> So you just follow along behind people, and it's not always easy to tell which ones are the dancers, yeah. but they've obviously usually got their bells in their bag or something yeah. if they've taken them off. So you just try and work out which one of them was the first <laughs> dancer. Which one jingling is the name of my jazz band? <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking hell. How do you have time to podcast? I'm in so many jazz bands right now. I know. I'm in one of those really, really prog jazz bands that doesn't actually play music. Oh, okay. Fuck prog. Are those the ones that play in 444? Yeah, I invented a time signal once, it was called 444. Okay. I'm not that musically inclined, I mean, I play the TJS bass for fuck's sake, but I've still never found anybody who can tell me what 444. Not 444 or 444. 444. I invented a time signature that nobody can play. Okay. I think if you do play it, it just says Dream Theater. Method. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're right. Anyway, anyway, sweeps. <laughs> no, no. That's, <laughs> that's, that's all my things on sweeps. Oh, well, for sure. Want to yeah. talk about sweeps some more? It's weird, it's weird like living in Kent because you know those are our kind of highlights of the calendar year as things yeah, is the yeah, focus. Yeah, things like that, yeah. I read a really interesting thing the other day. Do you know they're planning on building a theme park in Swanscombe? 
Yes, I've heard right. that. Did yeah. you hear why they're not um, going ahead with it? No. They found a species of endangered jumping spider. Wow. Yeah, I shit you not. That's I read amazing. an article about it, and they, they're they having to rehouse the spiders first because they have, they're have because they they're like either a new species or they're endangered yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Some reason that means you can't just fucking steamroll over them. <laughs> <laughs> Progress, bitch! They're that good to just jump the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Sure. But like, some things are endangered for it's a, a It's a weird place to build a theme park though isn't it well I, well I guess they said that about a lot of different theme parks oh that's the middle of nowhere that's the fucking idea yeah I guess so it's kind of endangered actually I found out uh, this week that the I'll bring a little bit of de- de- depression to depressed the strike west west <laughs> I love depressed strike African black rhino yep. is now officially extinct oh. that animal was gone oh. like there's none in captivity there's none in the wild so who We've, fucked up on the admin yeah exactly <laughs> but isn't, that, isn't that depressing like because you go like you'll never be able to go to a zoo or go on a safari and go that's a west African black rhino you will never be able to say that and I'm not, not I'm without, not I'm not no, a Greenpeace not guy not without a shovel no <laughs> I'm not a Greenpeace guy I'm not you know I, I always say that I don't know if turning my light off at night saves a polar bear but it certainly saves my I don't think it literally bill. saves a polar bear well you know what I mean but it saves my electricity bill and that's all I care about but it's scary that one day we'll be able to go you won't be able to go to your kids that's a rhino right. you will remember what a rhino was but as soon like if that species is gone that means our maybe our kids or our grandchildren may never see a rhino or an elephant on the other the hand the whole whole genus could go on the other hand well, it does mean champions. <laughs> One <laughs> last piece. She's down. down top, motherfuckers. Read it and weep. <laughs> well, I'm surprised at you, though, man, because you, you seem down about the black rhino, but the fact that there's still plenty of white rhino. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew that was coming and it was so fucking good. How many times can you say black rhino before somebody makes a black man joke? <laughs> well, they've got black panthers. Are they still extinct? <laughs> yeah, they're still around. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Racism on a crazy train. To Auschwitz. The black rhinos are extinct and that's okay. <laughs> as long as there's white and Hispanic rhinos. <laughs> Is a Hispanic rhino. See, see, I <laughs> have a horn. Don't like those Jewish rhinos. <laughs> <laughs> I have a horn in my face. He hates Jewish rhinos who um, only play Jewish rhinos in films. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> bastards. <laughs> like Mel Brooks rhino. <laughs> no, but you're, you're quite right. He's sad about that. He's sad yeah. about the rhino. Let's spare a thought. Black or white? Let's have a moment for the black rhino. Alright, no, let's not. I've got it. I've got it. Fuck him. Apparently Blake says fuck rhino, it's moving <laughs> no, on. No, 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 no. Fuck black rhino. No, no, let's have a moment of silence for the black rhino because Rob will probably accidentally edit this bit out. Yeah. So that's sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Rob the other day. <laughs> if we leave any blank sections, Rob leaves it out, so... I don't... And then all... <laughs> <laughs> Does this bit make it really awkward to edit out because of the way I'm talking? Actually, I just didn't interrupt my sentence there. I just stopped it every now and again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to do it a bit later on just to make it sound like my microphone is fucked up. Okay. <laughs> More than one microphone? <laughs> None of the crazy motherfuckers. <laughs> More than one microphone. It's not just low budget. Crazy. It's low budget. And on a budget. Yeah, We've got no microphones. How are we recording this sound? Through crazy. <laughs> Makes the crazy sound waves. I borrowed a uh, m- microphone from the Tap Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Sound as recorder guys. So I was in a casino in Cyprus. Go for it. With my family. Yes. And in the casinos in Cyprus, normally all your food, drinks, when you could still smoke inside there, yeah. cigarettes, everything are provided because they do not want you to walk out those doors because you might not come back and spend more money. Okay. Um, and normally they do like a lot of Turkish food in like a buffet kind of style and there's a certain amount of seats you can sit down. Yeah. So we went up, got some food, and there were no tables. Mm. So we kind of, there was like, in the middle of the casino there was like this circular tabling section and... And there were tables outside of it as well. So we went and sat down, and then a uh, waiter came by, and my dad kind of flagged him and was like, excuse me, can we just get a big bottle of water, please? Mm. And he said, uh, in Turkish to my dad, all this is, and he goes, you can't, uh, you can't sit here. Mm. Touch Basically this. meaning, you can't, eh? Touch this. Only the white rhinos are allowed here. You, um, <laughs> you can only and eat. Rhino parks. You can like, only, no. <laughs> You can only eat in that section up there. Okay. And I said to my dad in English, what's up? And he went, uh, he's saying we can only eat in the section over there. And I just, I don't know how we did this because it wasn't pre-planned. I just went and looked at him, just tutted at him, looked at him and looked down at my plate and shook my head. Right. And my dad in Turkish 
said to the waiter, do you know who this is? Okay. Um, he wrestled Jimmy like, Snooker once. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, who? And he's just like, no. And he's like, this is Omer Ibrahim from England. Right. And just did it with such an air of authority that the, the waiter paused for a second and went, I'm very sorry, sir. Can I get you anything else? I'll bring you a bottle of water. And, and genuinely believe, my dad didn't even say who I was. Yeah. Just the way he presented me. Well, no, he didn't because nobody. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I am not famous. No, no. My dad just presented me like I was. I know, yeah. And we got away with it. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote, oh, is he the guy who wrestled Jimmy Snooker once? <laughs> 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 no, I'd wrestled him at that point. It would have been like, no, it would have been great if he'd just been like, do you know who this is? <laughs> Fucking nobody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Dad. Yeah, that would fit over there. I said to my dad, when I, now, I've, now I've done up the shop. The, um, you know who this is? The population of over there. Fuck off. <laughs> in, the, in the shop, when I've, now I've done the shop, and the, the flat's obviously built above the shop, <laughs> the, the um, waste pipe <laughs> runs kind of through the shop. Okay. So it's boxed in, so obviously you can't just see my poo pipe. <laughs> a transparent poop pipe is a niche product. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's boxed off, so there's this long run of boxing that's taken up room, and I was like, well, we've got to make a feature out of it. Portal gun. Yeah. <laughs> so I said to my dad, well, what if, I was talking about that, what if I paint, <laughs> what if I paint like a bike race along it, like all our friends and that, Yeah. on like get people to send in from the customers in the shop pictures of themselves on bikes, and they get somebody to paint them up there, so they're like, oh, there's me, you know, yeah. blah, blah. And I said, oh, me and you, will be at the front of it, like me and I'm talking to my dad, and he went, yes son, as long as I'm winning. <laughs> but just to constantly remind me that it's always been his shop and always will, <laughs> even though I bought it now, he's like, no son, this is my shop, and people come in now and go, all right Oz, right, my dad is a 68 year old man, in which case he's with be for white that. hair, about three inches smaller than me, taller, yeah. uh, shorter than me, and looks... I have long, fluffy hair and a big beard, and people still look me, not just in passing, because I understand you see a bloke in that bike shop who's been there for 30 odd years, you might go, hello, Oz. Yeah. But they look me in the eyes and go, hello, Oz, how's it going? How's your wife? And I'm like, I'm clearly not my dad because I'm not 60 fucking eight. So hang on, she's gone from your ex to your wife. And ex. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, going you look nothing like your dad. Exactly. Well, I look, what, well, the beard. I think like, I have a family. You've got, got, got a bit of it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can tell that, but. But obviously, big but beard. But in the turn head. of looking at you, both yeah. of you, I would go. That's definitely not his dad. Yeah. Yeah. Even um, the skin tone. Like, yeah, my dad's like born in Cyprus, so he's darker skinned. Okay. Yeah. Not like those white rhinos. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking white rhinos. Yeah. Fuck all. Goddamn racist rhinos. So yeah. fucking lazy. Um, actually, yeah, actually, that's a good point. We're not the ones being racist. It's fucking rhino keepers that are being racist. Yeah, yeah. damn it. So, yeah, no, here we go. Why did you call them fucking black rhinos and white rhinos? Can't they all just be rhinos? Yeah. Like, why are you yeah, separating no, no, us, yeah. man? You say that, and also, you get rid of all the fucking black rhinos. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't you save the black rhinos? Would you do it if it was people? No, that'd be racist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're saving all the white rhinos. I only happen to like white Hispanic rhinos. Yeah. A Jewish white Hispanic rhinos. All right, yeah, they're, they're even more niche. <laughs> On that note, should we wrap up? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Not too warm though, because it's Africa and that's. It's really warm today. It's really fucking hot. It's like Africa in here right now. It really is. Which is with less black rhinos, fewer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for correcting the part of the sentence that definitely needed correcting. <laughs> Why are we talking about too many black rhinos? <laughs> well, there's not any. So, well, there's some, just not the West African. Oh right, black yeah. Rhinos. Oh, so they're still black rhinos. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are some. Not all black rhinos are gone. I think you'll be better. some in Howlett, I believe. So. Really? Yeah. I think you'll be Make better. A bang. <laughs> if I think it'd be best if we could end it on a pause, starting now. Hey, so uh, Blake managed to actually stop the recording rather than pause it like he thought he was doing, which was a good joke in hindsight. But uh, yeah, it doesn't mean I have to come back in and do the outro. So uh, I was hard. <laughs> you certainly are, Blake. <laughs> but we love you for it. So thanks for listening. Keep it uh, tuned to emotionally14.com. That's the number 14 now, not the letter, because we lost the domain name to some fucking camping cunt. <laughs> uh, emotionally14 on Twitter. Again, 1-4. Uh, send uh, your questions and comments to podcast at e14.33mail.com. And uh, just keep tuning in. For I'm Mary Ibrahim. For Blake Harmer, I've been Rob Wade. Thank you very much. How about those black rhinos? Bye! <laughs>